allow me to welcome you all to the ninth edition of the Interdisciplinary Book Forum, a semestral joint offering of the Lika'an UP Institute of Creative Writing and the University of the Philippines Press. It is the aim of this forum to provide a venue for and to foster intellectual exchange across the disciplines by bringing together a variety of voices in our academic community and occasionally a variety of voices from outside it in order to unpack crucial issues that impinge on our national life. It is only proper, I suppose, given the primacy of our university's position in our higher education system, that such issues and questions are being occasioned by a newly released title of the official publishing house of our country's one and only national university. On a more basic level, and as the position of director has increasingly impressed upon me, the books of the UP Press may be said to complement the university's fundamental mission to promote profound forms of archival and categorical literacy, which is the precondition for the kind of capacious imagination and empathy that are entirely necessary if a modern nation like ours should ever hope to cohere, and more importantly, to endure. More and more I have come to realize and accept the fact that for most of our people, literacy coexists with and must continue to be confounded by an abiding orality. To my mind, it is the personalistic, tactile, communal, situational, and anti-categorical psychodynamics of our persistently oral lifeways that may be said to provide clear evidence of the historical continuity of our cultures over the long durée between our country's pre- and post-colonialities. Obviously, one of the primary values of the book that we are featuring today is precisely in its being not just literate, but also altogether numerate, empirical, and data analytical. To my mind, it, is, it most likely is the very first systematic chronological cataloging and documenting in book form of the series of natural calamities that the island grouping of Mindanao has undergone across our country's recorded history. These events the authors have decided to call disasters, precisely because of the tremendous environmental and human toll that they have exacted, which they have endeavored to tally and quantify as best as they could, alongside their scientific descriptions of the natural upheavals themselves. Suffice it to say that we are not new to cataclysm in this tempest-tossed country, whose jagged islands are perched on the lip of the restless abyss. Speaking about orality, just now I'm reminded of my first speech as UP Press director, how theatrically I bewailed the lingering but altogether powerful orality that permeates our lives as a recently and unevenly literate country, simply because this cultural feature, characterized by a provisional, fluid and mutable memory, has all too sadly prevented us from remembering and thinking more tenaciously about things. As we know, this is precisely the kind of skill that we need in order to set aright so much of what is wrong about our political, economic, and moral systems, all of which are blighted by exactly the kinds of feudal and clientelist ties premised on the personalistic and anti-meritocratic logic that orality breeds and requires. Indeed, as this book urges us to realize, the bigger and possibly truer disaster in our country's history of periodic natural disasters has been the failure of our local and national leaderships, not only in alleviating the suffering of victims, but also in their inability or downright unwillingness to enact policies and programs that will minimize or at least mitigate the effects of these adversities on our people. Just now, I'm thinking about the saying that our memories are not quite long, enduring, or solid enough, and this is why we never seem to learn the lessons, bitter and multiple and repetitious, of our mostly anguished history. However, in light of all the horrific catastrophes that emerge out of our geological fatedness, as well as all the routine socio-political failings to which we, as a country, appear to be uniquely prone, we may begin to understand that, maybe, the shortness of our remembering exists for a reason. 
in the face of the depredations of cyclical misery in this corner of a hostile earth, who indeed wants to keep recalling the experience of relentless and unremitting loss? As with the other forms of academic instruction across pretty much the entire globe at this most inclement of times, our forum has, for two semesters now, been conducted remotely with our discussants presenting and interacting via an online platform. It's been our experience that this modality works efficiently and efficaciously enough, especially since the audience is even larger than would have been possible in the usual format. One guess is that, as with graduate seminars and such informative online content as, as podcasts, online forums, which can be experienced both synchronously and asynchronously by audiences that can only increase and proliferate across time, can potentially be very useful and generative indeed. We in the UP Press, needless to say, see this as an excellent opportunity to market our titles. But other than that, this forum exemplifies one of the ways in which we have been seeking to provide a social life to our books. Obviously, without readers, books don't really get to be alive, which is to say they don't really get to transcend their physical realities as objects and become the meaningful, transformative, and possibly immortal things that we in the humanities like to call texts. Aside from this forum, we have been participating in literary and book festivals, sponsoring book signings and poetry readings, and uploading a variety of publishing-related content to our own social media pages. On behalf of the UP Press and of the Likaan, in which I'm a fellow for poetry, I would like to extend our sincerest gratitude to our eminent panel of discussants. Of course, we would also like to thank our featured authors, Professors Lagmai and Baldago for entrusting their important and physically lovely work to us. Here's to more and more socially transformative literacy. Here's to a truly meaningful and memorable book forum. A pleasant day to everyone. Maraming salamat po. Maayong hapon sa tanan. I am J. Jomar F. Quintos from the Department of Filipino and Philippine Literature, UP Diliman, and I will be your moderator for this afternoon's event, the Ninth Interdisciplinary Book Forum, organized by the Likaan Institute of Creative Writing and the University of the Philippines Press. For this afternoon, we will be discussing the book, A Timeline of Mindanao Disasters, by Alfredo Mahar A. Lagmay and Maria Criselda B. Baldago, published by the UP Press in 2020. A brief background to me that happened to lose studies. In 2016, Rodrigo Roa Duterte was elected to the highest position in the Philippine government, considered to be the first Mindanaoan of Sabuan and Maranao descents to hold the office. Duterte has made headlines about the issues and controversies involving his administration, from extrajudicial killings to misogyny to maritime disputes up to rumors of his failing health. These turn of events have probably triggered everyone to become more interested in Mindanao and Sulu. The media and everyone's attention have, since then, turned to the island region of Mindanao and Sulu. The peculiarity of its terrain and topography, the diversity of its populations, the geopolitics enmeshed in its territories, the myths ensconced in the Promised Land and the Garden of Gods, and even the decades-old conflict in certain parts of the island region. It is in this conjuncture that the Lika and ICW and UP Press situate this forum about the book, A Timeline of Mindanao Disasters. The book compiles and briefly annotates the natural hazards and disasters in Mindanao and Sulu. It is also a critical intervention that serves as part of a people-centered early warning system that tries to remind and at the same time prepare the people in the southern part of the Philippines about the possible hazards and disasters that might arise in the future. A timeline of Mindanao disasters is written by two academics from the National Institute of Geological Sciences, UP Diliman. First is Dr. Alfredo Mahar Francisco A. Lagmay, who is an academic of the National Academy of Science and Technology and professor at the National Institute of Geological Sciences, UP Diliman. 
Dr. Lagmay is currently the director of the University of the Philippines Nationwide Operational Assessment of Hazard Center, established to conduct research and development and extension services on natural hazards, disaster risk reduction, and climate change. He is also the executive director of the UP Resilience Institute, an institution established by the UP system as an agent of change in the country's disaster resilient efforts. He is a recipient of the 2008 Outstanding Research Award from the OSD, the 2013 Professional Regulation Commission Outstanding Professional of the Year Award, and the 2013 Outstanding Filipino Award, the 2015 Plenius Medal of the European Geosciences Union, and the 2020 Start Network Changemaker Award. The second author is Maria Criselda Baldago, who is currently a university research associate at the National Institute of Geological Sciences. She is a graduate of Bachelor of Science and in Geology and currently pursuing his ma her master's degree in NICS, focusing on the diffuse carbon dioxide degassing of the Al Volcano. She has also been involved in various natural hazard studies in the Philippines, such as flood hazard and risk assessment of Santa Maria Laguna and mapping of natural hazard cascades. She has also served as part of the quick response teams sent by NIGS to respond to the 2019 Cotabato earthquakes and the 2020 Taal eruption. Now, to give us a brief opening discussion about the book, let's welcome one of the authors, Dr. Mahar Lagmay. Once regarded as the island of promises, Mindanao has become a gateway to opportunity for Philippine international investors, eyeing opportunities in agribusiness, industry, and tourism. Eight of the top ten agricultural commodities exported from the Philippines come from Mindanao and is the world's third leading exporter of bananas with 75% of the fruit export coming from Mindanao in 2014. It is the food basket of the Philippines. Similar to the fruit industry, the marine fisheries business of the Philippines is dominated by Mindanao, being the source of 48.37% of the country's production output. Out of the 46 operating metallic mines of the country in 2014, 28 were in the mountain belts of Mindanao, with 20 nickel mines, 4 gold mines, 2 copper mines, one chromite mine and one iron mine. But even with the 60% of the operating mines already located in Mindanao, it is still largely untapped for its mineral wealth. Mindanao is truly blessed, not only with its outstanding natural resources, but also with relatively good climate compared to the rest of the Philippines. Not everywhere in the world does this kind of endowment happen all in one place. However, despite its potential, Mindanao remains underdeveloped compared to Luzon Island. To manage these resources and opportunities requires a delicate balance, the absence of which can lead to conflict. In fact, conflict has plagued Mindanao for centuries. The historical viewpoint explains the deep-rooted context of the conflict in Mindanao, largely anchored on religion, self-determinism, equitable access to natural resources, and rights to ancestral domain. These long-standing issues need to be addressed if the Muslims and Christians are to find peace in the South. Else, the same issues that have plagued the Southern Philippines shall remain and suggests continued instability and tension in the region which lead to disasters. The Mindanao disaster timeline represents events in the recorded history that reminds people in the region of the threats of natural hazards. The bigger and more deadly hazards that have taken place are spaced at intervals of decades or centuries and are normally lost in the memory of the younger generations. It is important that these disastrous events be remembered as they represent critical information which serves as basis for planning, vital for effective prevention and mitigation of disaster risk 
and over resil overall resilience for, of communities in Mindanao. This in turn ensures development unhampered by calamities. The Mindanao disaster timeline is a start towards getting the record of disasters more complete. Learning from the previous initiatives, scholars have been encouraged to write social studies, CBICA modules, one that clearly and justly integrates Mindanao history and culture to enhance the promotion of peace and harmony among the peoples of the region. Such process may be enriched by the inputs of everyone. This book serves as part but concrete basis for anticipatory planning necessary for the development of Mindanao, which we hope will be useful to attain genuine and lasting peace in the region. Thank you, Dr. Lagmay, for that valuable introduction to the book. And now to help us tease out the nuances that evolve around the, the discourses on disaster, creative writing, research, and governance, we will be joined in by four resource speakers from the various disciplines of natural sciences, social sciences, and the humanities. Each speaker will be given eight minutes to share their insights about the book and, it, that, and how it can be entwined in their respective fields. It will then be followed by an open session. For our participants on Facebook, if you do have questions, please type them in on the comment section. We will collate and consolidate them for later's open session. There will also be a feedback form that will be posted in the comment section. Uh, so those who will answer the form will be, will be given a certificate. Now let's go to our first speaker. He is professor at the University of the Philippines, Diliman, and currently the director of Philippine Nuclear Research Institute. A proven expert in the field of geology, he also previously served as director of the UP National Institute of Geological Sciences. He has also been involved in nuclear research related uh, nuclear related research for more than a decade, particularly on nuclear waste disposal. He received the 2019 Gregorio Y. Zara Award for basic research for his contributions to resolving sensitive issues on mineral resource development, water management, and developing peaceful applications for nuclear energy in the Philippines. In 2020, he made it to top 100 Asian scientists along with 10 other Filipinos named by the Asian Scientist magazine. Let's welcome Dr. Carlo Caloy Arcilia. Magandang hapon po sa inyo. Uh, in order to uh, uh, share my insights uh, to this uh, for this book, I have a short presentation. Kindly share my presentation. Uh, anyway, while waiting for the presentation, I, I'm honored to actually uh, give uh, this perspective on this book, uh, especially with my colleague and friend, uh, Dr. Mahara Gmai and uh, uh, Chrisada Baldago, who is also my graduate student. Let's see, uh, do we have the presentation already ready? I can also share it from my end if need be. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Okay, I'll go to the next slide then. Immediately. Okay. Uh, Will Durant uh, said that civilizations exist with geologic consent, and this is actually very, very true in the Philippines, uh, where we have uh, a lot of. Uh, tectonic events that happen and then this is the uh, we have to live with this and uh, geology being a of a different timeline if you talk about timelines uh, the geology timelines are actually in the 
millions and billions of years as compared to humans where only have a few decades. And uh, I'd like to, uh, as, an, as a perspective to the book, uh, to, 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 to show you why it's important to have the geological foundation uh, in order to understand uh, disasters. Next slide, please. And then we are one of the most vulnerable uh, uh, in the world in terms of disasters. We have typhoons, as you will see, floods, storm surges, landslides, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanic eruptions, and uh, just uh, hinted at before politicians. I mean, politicians in all the sorts, from uh, from the local, maybe to the national, or even tribal heads, and all of that, you know, which actually uh, make these national uh, natural disasters far worse than they would have been. Next slide, please. This is an illustration why uh, the Philippines is actually uh, uh, disaster prone, I mean, to a certain extent. If you notice, uh, we are, th those black lines around the Philippines are trenches. We're surrounded by two trenches in the east and west side of the Philippines, which are causes of earthquakes and volcanoes. And to the east of the Philippines is the largest body of water in the world, the Pacific Ocean, and all typhoons are born uh, in in uh, uh, in the uh, in, in the ocean. So uh, analogy of this is like uh, the, the the oceans will be born and raised in the uh, typhoons, and they will start migrating. We're like the corner pocket of this huge billiard uh, table, uh, which is the Pacific Ocean. And so, next slide, please. What happens is that uh, the most of the disasters, and this has been, this actually I owe this from uh, uh, the compilation of doctors, uh, uh, Mahar Lagmay and Rodolfo, uh, the life loss in more recent years were extreme rainfall uh, uh, related. And some of these typhoons uh, are, are in few, actually Pablo there is in Mindanao, but many are in Luzon and, and, uh, and Visayas. Next slide, please. A short summary done a few years ago by Eman Anglo uh, saying that uh, there were about 20 typhoons that entered the Philippines on the average. And uh, and Manila is actually protected from typhoons in September and October, the riskiest months. And uh, the, the, those, if you integrate all of those tracks, you can see there uh, in, that, in, in that graph on the right that Mindanao is rarely visited by typhoons, as you can see. Next slide, please. Now this one, it's unfortunate that the, uh, uh, the, 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 the PDF version doesn't show this. And we just had uh, one of the worst uh, typhoons in, 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 uh, in, in centuries, Typhoon Haiyan, that actually hit uh, the, uh, the Philippines a few years ago. Now, disasters that has been, next slide, is actually this one. Uh, this would have shown to you uh, if, the, if the simulation were working, that uh, the cloban there is particularly at risk for storm surges because it's a cul-de-sac. So when the typhoon actually passes in that specific direction, it will actually push the water in the cul-de-sac. So which means that over time, with all of the typhoons happening, it's likely that this event would have happened in the past and will likely happen in the future. In the next slide, uh, compared a, a for example, it shows that 70% uh, of the evacuation centers in Tacloban were hit by storm surges. It's a data from, uh, from Dr. Ragmai's work in Project NOAA. And why were the, the evacuation centers built where they were be? Because they had no history, uh, historical perspective, that uh, it would be hit by storm surges. Next slide. And But in, 19, uh, in 1897, it was actually a storm surge and 15,000 people died. So very, very similar to this. It's actually impressive that this was, uh, this was covered uh, uh, and, 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 and these storms. And so, which means that as uh, what was mentioned in the introduction today, uh, our lifetimes uh, I don't exceed 100 years or more. And, 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 and so we might forget people, uh, the book quotes this that some people will say, oh, I live, pinanganak na ako sa tabi ng dagat, sanay na ako sa bagyo. But hindi pa siya nakakakita ng storm surge. In fact, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you an anecdote that happened uh, before Haiyan uh, happened. I happened to be the director of NIGS at the time. And then uh, Dr. Lagmay was already the, the head of Project NOAA. 
and they made they made predictions of storm surges the day before and uh and i asked him specifically predictions were made yes right and then the next day when i asked him what happened and he said it's eerie there there's nothing there's no no word it's because the time could have destroyed all the communication so no and it was one of the, the most uh, uh you know there was this creeping fear that uh, something big really had happened next slide please and then of course you have lessons also from ondoy next slide i'll just uh, uh and then of course the typhoon pablo the bofa that happened in compostela valley discussed by them and if you look at this slide actually uh, you will see uh next slide, next slide please yeah uh, this is also in the book and i was actually in this town new bataan a few months before this happened and uh, the, the, the the landslide that happened here literally wiped out next slide you can see just how impressive this thing here see that whole town was covered by this low next slide and then you see the height of this about almost 10 meters that's maharlag my there barely visible. next slide and so how did uh 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 noah at the time uh try to to to, to help they did an extensive uh mapping of, of of the of the surface uh using lidar uh, so with, with our partners from uh, the council of engineering and with, with this next slide they were able to predict areas that will be flooded uh, if this is a success story and then next slide and uh, some success stories, for example, the Habagat floods in, in, in Marikina uh, were predicted. And then next slide. And uh, even in, uh, in, 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 uh, in, in Cagayan in the Oro itself, after it was hit, the next time around, they were better prepared. Next slide. And so some of the no success stories, next slide, you can see here. And, uh, and this is from uh, Mahar Lagmay again. If his timeline in Luzon shows this in 1990, 1990, if you look at that, 60 people dead, 300 people dead, in Saugun, 1,000 people dead, 465 people dead. There were people always dying from disasters. When Project Noah came in, Habagat flood, zero dead. You know, few people are dying now, but then Haiyan came in with a storm surges and Pablo landslide flows. But after that, if this act is, uh, this slide extends to the right, very few people die now from disasters because they've been predicted. Project Noah, to my mind, was one of, one of the most successful projects. That's why it's a very good introduction. And, it's, I, and I, I will say that the authors have very good credibility in, in discussing uh, disasters. Next slide, please. This is a perfect example. This, this disaster, quote unquote, that happened uh, somewhere in Luzon, was predicted hours before and they were evacuated so no one died but look you see hundreds of homes were destroyed so this is an example uh the reason why i'm giving this uh, uh this is this introduction to the book is that you can only appreciate disasters if you know the geologic basis for them how they have happened and how the philippine government and some people have actually uh, that the group mahar lagmai has helped mitigate them and actually, I have used next slide, the data they have to expose corruption. I mean, here is uh, the, uh, the, 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 the supposed to be flood management master plan of Metro Manila costing 350 billion pesos. And that's the flood maps that the World Bank and the, D and the DPWH then wanted to show. Here's what we can control uh, with 351 billion pesos. Now, using uh, the, the maps created by Dr. Lagmai, next slide, you would see that the map situations are far more complicated than they showed. So if it's diagnosed poorly, how can you uh, 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 do the, 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 the solution? And we will be spending bad money again. Next slide. So the book, as I said, is an excellent introduction of the basic geography and geologic concepts needed to understand natural disasters. And the author, especially Dr. Lagmai, have incredible credibility in disaster prevention, especially from uh, uh, the experience derived from Project NOAA. What I mentioned in the past few minutes are just a few things that I have learned. I mean, I'm I'm honored to have been part in a small way uh, 
of, of, of this project because I was director when this was born uh, uh, in, in during my term at that head at uh, head at uh, uh, UP NIGS. And as was mentioned also in, in the introduction, the final disasters in Mindanao proved that personal reminiscences are inadequate in responding as some events transcend lifetimes as the uh, high and typhoon high and repeated disasters that happen over time. And it also illustrates, and I think the time shows, the importance of science-based approach sharpened by historical incidents. Uh, but they can only be useful if the LGUs and those who make decisions actually listen. And I've seen that uh, people in government actually listen when they see this. Uh, I, I've seen it uh, myself, you know, uh, when, when Dr. Ragma and his group were making predictions when they were in the NRIMC room, a specific mayor would, would, talk, would be told this kind of uh, accident will happen or this disaster will happen to you in a few hours. So they had to make decisions. Wala pong ganun dati. Ngayon meron na. Malaki pong natulong dito. I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the reason, as I said, that uh, many people's lives have been saved is because science has been applied because of people like Mahar Lagmay and his, uh, and his colleagues who have done this work. And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, uh, anyway, parts of uh, NOAA uh, was discontinued. But the LGUs now have a lot of tools with which to contend with disasters. We cannot stop disasters. We cannot stop typhoons, but we will know how to, you know, to live with them. Next slide, and this is my last slide. I'd like to mention, however, uh, because I mean, the, the, the book contains uh, some some comments uh, that that the, the, the roots of the problems are, are based on religion. It's partly true, but I would tend uh, to to comment. I have actually worked in Mindanao uh, for uh, for more than ten years uh, 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 with, uh, with research, and it's not a simple Islam Christian dynamic. Okay. And why do I say this? For example, the poorest segment of the Philippine population presently are in the ARMM, especially women. So it's not just the Christians who are at fault here. There could be some tribal hegemonies who could have played an important role, and maybe we're not looking at that carefully. Uh, so it's, uh, and uh, a friend of mine who did his PhD in the University of Pennsylvania, who died last year, in his dissertation said, and I, I quote, uh, he, he said that the, the case in Mindanao is a perception of permanent deprivation. And he says, the perception of permanent deprivation can be avoided and overcome, but only through the cooperation of both the community at large and the sincere actions of an enlightened leadership. And so I, I say that uh, in one of my slides earlier, it's true that uh, uh, while it's true that uh, the, uh, the disasters are there, uh, leaders, if they listen to scientists, can actually help a lot. And this has been proven uh, during NOAA, and this has been proven in, the, in a lot of Mindanao. So it's not really a bad thing. And then the most impressive thing about uh, uh, our scientists, especially in the disaster mitigation, is that it's Filipino technology. I mean, Filipino scientists did this. Uh, when Mahar Lagma and his team were forming NOAA, they were selecting technology coming in here. They, 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 just, they just didn't uh, import a technology wholesale and i know this because i presented uh, the, the results uh, in a united nations conference and people were impressed and and i told them you know the only reason why you were successful is because we have top scientists who actually understood the problem and we also had some government people who listened to them so maraming pong salamat mahar salamat sa pagsusulat nitong uh, librong ito at sana naman ay magamit ng mga nasa poder ng decision uh, God bless you and your family and, 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 and uh, for writing this book. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Kadoy, for that incisive discussion now, on why the Philippines is a natural hazard and disaster-prone area, geologically and politically. Now, perhaps we can talk, talk about it more later during the open session. Uh, again, to our participants on Facebook, if you do have questions, please type them in. Uh, in the comment section, we will collate and consolidate them for later's open session. 
Now, for our second speaker. He teaches at the Department of Humanities in the University of the Philippines, Mindanao. He holds an MFA in Creative Writing from the New School. His fiction and literary translation have appeared in Lika and Six, Critica Cultura, Book Actually's Gold Standard, Cha and Asian Literary Journal, Words Without Borders, Shenandoah, and World Literature Today, among others. He is a co-editor of Ulirat, Best Contemporary Stories in Translation from the Philippines, published by Gaudi Boy. A recipient of Ford Foundation International Fellowship, he is currently the president of the Davo Writers Guild and a member of the Young Critics Circle Film Desk. Let's welcome Professor John B. Bengan. Thank you, John Bates. Maayong hapon sa tanan. So I will give my response to the book now um, from the perspective of the humanities and as a writer of fiction and also as a citizen from Mindanao. So I don't have a presentation. However, I will read something. <clears throat> the chrono the, the, this volume, Slim Condense, presents an oblique Mindanao history from the perspective of disaster, mostly natural, but sometimes undeniably man-made. The aim is to provide a useful resource material that could help provide the public a historical sense of the calamities that had befallen their towns in the hopes of better preparing them for the certainty of recurrence. The chronological mapping begins with what could be the earliest recorded natural catastrophes, such as the eruption of Mount Parker in the 1700s, a drought in the same century described as a plague in Blair and Robertson, the, nine, the 1879 Surigao earthquake, and a storm surge in Davao in 1907. The chapters are divided into various cataclysms, typhoon and extreme weather, drought, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions. Some entries appear more than once since a calamity may escalate to another extreme situation, such as the Mount Parker Dam breach of 1995 that may have started with a collapse of a fragment of the crater and brought about a great flood in South Cotabato. The book tells us that the cause of the dam breach remains a mystery among scientists and experts to this day. On a personal note, I have been to the crater lake twice, and it was definitely stirring to find these entries, about the entries about the place in the book. In each chapter, the authors are careful to provide an explication of concepts from cyclones, fault lines, the El Nino Southern Oscillation, to terms like pyroclastic density, before proceeding to a catalog of calamities. The events are invariably presented. Some disasters are described at length, some cursorily. The accounts are based on sources as varied as James Francis Warren to the Philippine Daily Inquirer. And sometimes even locals are also uh, included here in the book snippets from interviews. Even though this is his history, the narratives are appropriately validated by science. At the end of the book, a glossary is provided. In spite of the book's advocacy to advance fair and correct knowledge or information in the, young gen in the young generation of learners, this sentiment seems to be more asserted within the pages of the introduction. Thus, after referring to the Islamized groups as Muslims early in the book, we find further in the timeline sentences such as exploration, and I quote, exploration by outsiders was difficult because it is located in a part of Mindanao occupied and controlled by the Moros. The passage refers to the 1916 eruption of Ragang, a volcano that lies between Lanao del Sur and Cotabato. In another entry in the timeline, the book refers to majority of the 25,000 lives affected by the Mount Parker Dam breach as tribals. Further refinement of one's reading of varied sources, along with engagement with the latest scholarship on Mindanao, could amend these stated viewpoints. Especially in the case of Mindanao, the more specific we are, the more we enrich the discourse. Although the introduction provides a general context for the reader to imagine these complexities rising from the landscape, these circumstances are not underpinned in the cataloging of the events. 
especially when certain calamities, which could have been prevented, return and continue to leave casualties. For instance, a string of fatal landslides ripped across Moncayo, Mako, and Pantukan more than once in a span of a few years in what today is known as Davao de Oro. The book notes that the Cagayan de Oro was more prepared when Typhoon Vinta hit several years after Typhoon Sendong. But the same cannot be said about Lanao del Norte and Zamboanga del Norte. A more authoritative chronology could have married data with point of view. Perhaps what the hard data found in this timeline could not capture anymore is the continuity of these catastrophes to the social, economic, political, and cultural movements taking place in the islands within the period the book covers. Amid the scientific data, the book is filled with details that could be expanded and lead to further exploration. One such detail is the person who drowned, swept away by floodwaters after the jeepney they were riding turned while crossing a bridge in Mahayag, Zamboanga del Sur. Another is a 10-year-old boy trying to climb the roof of their house in Sultan Kudarat. In Tiboli, South Cotabato, residents heard the sound of lightning and thunder shortly before the water that overflowed from the dam swept across their communities. During an earthquake in Pagadian in 1902, large amounts of water and foul odor rose from the ground during an earthquake. Hazard maps had been made available online in the Lama Lanao del Norte, but were unfortunately not used to prepare the community against the possibility of debris flow. An oral history could make a good companion to this volume that nevertheless provides us with scientifically accurate listing of destructive natural phenomena. If not oral history, a journalist or a writer of nonfiction writing in perhaps a more permissive style could retell these narratives with bolder assertions about the themes, patterns, meanings, and recurring struggle of people, not of peoples, not only with nature, but with systems that perpetuate the tale of hollow resilience. Historians and writers, fiction or nonfiction, would find this book a handy guide of for chronology and facts. Our storytellers could continue what the book has begun by integrating the personal and collective experiences of the peoples whose lives these events had transformed. Dagang salamat sa inyong tanan. Salamat ka ayo John sa imuhang nindot na take sa book. It was a valuable input in mapping out uh, the intersection no, where the area of Mindanao and Sulu studies and natural scientists na natural sciences meet no, vis a vis uh, natural hazards and disasters. Now, let's have a quick break no, before we move to our next speakers. We're going to announce the winners of our raffle on Facebook. Yay! Okay, Dalika and ICW asked the netizens on which lesson from history do they think can help the Philippines today? Dalika and ICW chose five winners, and the first winner is Manuel N.C., whose answer goes like this. Malaking bagay ang pagiging handa. Itinuro ito ni General Antonio Luna nang planuhin niya ang paghuhukay ng trincherang magpapabagal sa mga pwersang Amerikano habang nagtatayo ng base sa Mountain Province. Hindi maitatabi kailanman ang danas ng gera at danas sa pandemya. Mindset na maaaring pinagmulan sa pagluluklok ng mga opisyal ng militar imbes ng mga doktor sa pamunuan ng task force na nangunguna sa pagpaplano sa pagharap ng pandemya. Hindi ko layon na ipagtabi ang dalawa. Layon ko ang pag-ugnay ng kahandaan tulad ng maagap na pagbabatay sa mga bakura ng bansa bago pa kumalat ang virus. Hindi sasapat na inantay ni Aguinaldo ang paglilipat kapangyarihan na inaasahan niya mula sa mga Amerikano papuntang Pilipino. Gayong si General Luna ay nagplano na sakaling dumusog o maghabol ang hukbong Amerikano, inaasahang mapapabagal ang pagsunod ng mga Amerikano dahil sa trinchera. Hindi sasapat na nag-aantay ng bakuna nang hindi pinapabagal ang pagkalat ng virus. Kailangang matugunan ito sa mass testing at pinalakas na contact tracing. That was a sharp answer. Okay, now for our second winner, it's Christian L. Rigon. 
whose answer goes like, well, as a Filipino, I cannot deny the fact that most of us in this generation has very low interest when it comes to our nation's history. However, we should understand that every pieces and remnants of the past contributes very meaningful lessons which we can use for the present era. And in this time of suffering due to a global pandemic called COVID-19, we used to think deeper and understand what specific portions of history can help our nation today. For me, I believe we can use the experiences of past generations when cholera epidemic was reported in the Philippines in 1902. It claimed hundreds of thousands of lives. That is why it became very historic. We can apply the same bravery and discipline that our ancestors have used to overcome the type of devastation. Aside from that, we can also use their knowledge to create different ways or techniques of how we can prevent and stop the continuous spread of this virus. History always repeats itself, but at least from every repetition, we learn something new. Okay, another sharp answer. Uh, the Nika and ICW staff will get in touch with our first two winners on how they can claim their prize. Thank you. Okay, now let's move to our third speaker. He is a Jesuit priest, poet, and anthropologist, and activist. His works reveal his engagement in social and political issues, cultural analysis, and the development of contextual philosophy and theology. His publications include Tao Po, Tuloy, isang landas na pag-unawa sa loob ng tao, generating energies in Mount Apo, cultural politics in a contested environment, and ehemplo, spirituality of shared integrity in Philippine church and society. He also has three anthologies of poems in Tagalog, namely, Sanayan Lang Ang Pagpatay, Nabighani, Mga Saling Tula ng Kapwa Nilikha, and Isang Kahig, Isang Tula, Mahigit Dalawang Daang Tanaga. His current research interests touch on the political spirituality of Bontoc Bishop Francisco Claver, the spirituality of whistleblowing based on Moriones' Holy Week celebration, and on the church sanctuary ministry. He finished his PhD anthropology at the University of London and is currently a faculty member at the Department of Sociology and Anthropology in the Ateneo de Manila University. Let's welcome Father Albert E. Alejo. Padding Bert. Hello. Yes, we can hear you, Padding Bird. Uh, can you see me? <laughs> Lumipat ako ng lugar kasi, sorry. Ah. Yes, okay yes. Na ba? Uh, Pwede na. I think you need to turn on your video, uh, Padding Bird. All right. Yeah, there you go. There okay, you go. Pwede na. You. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. So, <clears throat> sige, magandang hapon sa... Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. At uh, <clears throat> maraming salamat. Ako, gusto kong mag-congratulate kay Lamahar at saka kay Misa Baldago at saka sa inyong lahat yan sa, sa um, UP Press. Salamat sa ganitong mga production. Importanting, importante ito. No? Ngayon, <clears throat> Uh, ang papel na assignment ko dito ay tungkol doon sa, sa cultural aspect. Matagal ako sa Mindanao. Pinanganak ako sa Mindanao pero lumaki ako sa Bulacan. Pero yung bilang Jesuit po, um, matagal ako na assign sa Mindanao. Sorry. Ayan. Um, hindi lang ako nakagamit ito eh. Yan. Ganyan ba? Paano ba? Yes, okay po. Sige po. Okay. Ba parang hindi mo usod yung slide ko. Mm -hmm. Ba't ayaw yung umusod? Hindi mo usod yung slide ko eh. Click yung numbers. Sorry about this. But I almost. Hmm. Sorry na ubus yung oras ko. Ah. <clears throat> uh, 
can help you. Can you give me instructions, sorry? But but hindi mo usod. But hindi mo usod ang slide ko. Perhaps, uh, padding bird, you can click the numbers, and uh, which, uh, which numbers? Which number? In the left corner of your. Uh, I'm clicking it. Clicking it, oh, okay. Oh, no lie. Ah. Sige, okay. Sige. Uh, I'm not sure why. What's what's going on here? <clears throat> Kanina, okay naman tayo, ha? Di ba? Sige, ano na lang po. Uh, Paring Bert, uh, ano na lang po tayo. Uh, pwede po kayo mag-start na and then the uh, organizers will fix the PowerPoint presentation and they will share it later. Sige po. Thank you. Ay, sayang naman. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> uh, can you give me instruction? Mabilis lang sana to. Uh, what should I be doing? Uh, Father, can you save it as PDF and then maybe show a PDF? One suggestion. Okay. So. Just you. yes, okay. Uh, while we're waiting for pa Padding Bird's uh presentation, let's announce our third winner. No, for <laughs> uh, yeah, the third winner of our raffle, and the third winner is Francisco Acevedo, whose answer goes like this Indolence, and I quote, This insult disparages us as it did then. Yes, many don't wear masks or follow protocol, but chastising ourselves with colonial mentality will only demoralize us. Rather, let's focus on education and discipline on ourselves to be more responsible. And then our fourth winner is Arkin Franny, whose answer goes like this. Not a lesson from history, but a lesson that still needs to be learned, lalo na tuwing halalan. Lagi-lagi nakikita natin sa mga poll at sa mga forecast na nananalo ang mga sikat o kilala na. At kitang-kita naman ito sa resulta. Sure, there are still some of those politicians who get elected and still work for the people's interests. But a lot of these elected officials win because of outright fame. Perhaps we need to purge this culturally rampant celebrity complex and consider the candidate's track record first before backing them up. Perhaps we need to look beyond reputation or see how the candidate built that renown. Ito lang naman ang lesson na kailangan pa nating matutuhan sa tingin ko. Otherwise, mas marami pa yatang boksingero, celebrity o blogger ang maihahalal sa mga LGU, Kongreso, Senado, at Diyos ko Lord, huwag naman sanang mangyari sa palasyo. And now for our last winner, it's none other than Julian Tomas Alvarez, whose answer goes like, I think understanding social political and economic institutions from a historical perspective equips us with wisdom on the very roots of our social problems as a nation. Poverty, persistently high levels of inequalities, and long-lasting conflicts are the results of poor policies and decisions that were made long before we even existed. While these problems have been deeply entrenched in our societies at present, I believe that understanding institutions from a historical lens would allow us to confront these challenges and to provide solutions, making sure that we never repeat the same mistakes for our future and for our children's future. Again, thank you very much for participating in the raffle. Kindly wait for the ICW staff to send you a message on how to claim your prize. Thank you. And now, going back to our okay, ready uh, na. <laughs> speaker, Ayan, I think Padding Bird is already ready in his presentation. Oh, so sige po. Okay, we're now giving you the floor, Padding Bird. Thank you. Okay, just a note from Padding Bird. Si Padding Bird po, si Albert Alejo SJ. 
uh, Filipino priest po. Ngayon, uh, dito sa preface, from the preface, there is a note here. This book is an offshoot of the Mindanao Peace and History Education Project, which produced a continuing evolving Mindanao Sulu timeline. It is a response to the call to heal our history and our desire for peace in our country. So this project on disaster actually came out of our project, which is for peace and history uh, timeline infographics. And it is a response on the call. It is in the it is a response. Sorry. It is a response to the call that all citizens should engage in trying to understand the Mindanao. Yun ang kasi laging problema yun eh. So what was my project before? Weaving a multi-strand Mindanao timeline. Well, how do you make Mindanao history in, you know, how do you tell the Mindanao history in such a way that it's not focused simply on the conflict between Christian and Muslim? And my, our strategy was to expand history to include both uh, the political, economic, cultural, and ecological history. Expand the notion of history itself to include political, government, conflict, but also peace agreements, and then socio-cultural, economic, pati yung mga introduction ng mga no, plantation, introduction of the Carabao, the, the, the schools, the universities, and ecological, don't forget, the environment. Para hindi lang yung puro Christian Muslim ang pinag, pinag-uusapan. Yun. So expected benefit, the fuller understanding of Mindanao history, and it is in the service of uh, the search for peace. And why infographic timeline? Because in one sweep, and our idea was the four meter, five meter long um, um, tarpaulin that includes and interweaves politics and numbers and images and stories and personalities and events. Yon, yanun paraan. So nangyari, we drafted a timeline which included all these things. And we consulted the people in Zamboanga, the MILF, and the Bangsamoro Development uh, Authority in Cotabato. Of course, there were, ano, ah, there were clashes. Halimbawa, makita nyo dito, Mindanao, Sulu. Eh, pero yung iba naman, ang gusto, Mindanao lang. In Mandawe City, even, and then the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos. So sabi nila, dapat ilagay nyo to, dapat alisin nyo yan. Dalagay nyo ba yung Jabida Massacre? Ilagay nyo rin yung massacre sa, sa Sambuanga del Sur. Mga ganyan, ano? Pinagdidebatihan yan. Pero the beautiful thing is that when you include pala culture and environment and volcanic eruption, then the discussion uh, becomes even richer. And so for, the Im for imaging it, we consulted a Muslim uh, artist and then, of course, for the ecology, disaster, environment, there's no other. See, Dr. Mahar. So we had to explain this, and Dr. Mahar was patient enough. Eventually, he produced a, a whole book based on our consultancy of him. <laughs> Kaya ito yung resulta. Ang ganda-ganda. Pero, siyempre, ngayon, ginagamit ito sa Catholic school at saka sa public school din. Yon. Ngayon, what else can we do? I think I'd like to appreciate it based on the, the framework that we started with. In, in the search of uh, peace and development. And for that, we need the production of knowledge that helps in the preparation for uh, planning for peace and development. There are some points here, pages 17 to 18. Nakalaga, I live near the shore, so I'm used to big waves and strong winds. Lahi ragyo dam bagyo. So this is beyond my memory. Um, I, I am an ethnographer. I'm a field worker. So I really appreciate local memories, local knowledge. But I realize also that it helps if there are also uh, documentations. I think planning, development planners should benefit from local histories, anecdotes, even myths, together with... Um, political maps and hazard maps uh, coming from empirical sciences. I think, sabi nga kanina, John, pagsamahin yan. Oo. And 
ang malaking kulang, marami sa mga studies kasi tungkol doon sa mga ethnographic materials, pero kulang nga dito sa scientific. So magandang pagsamayin yan. Yung mga creative writers, pag binasa nila itong libro ni ano, nila Mahar, siguro pwede na silang magdagdag pa ng, ng local color and local taste based on uh, folklore and stories. Pero may dadagdag din ako, <clears throat> siguro, paano ba ito pagdudugtungin, yung social science at natural science? Halimbawa, dito, record of disasters and people's responses. Nakalagay dito, year, event, tapos remarks, a description. Pero siguro maganda, para maidugtong natin, idugtungan natin isa pang linya, isang pang kolom, people's stories and responses. And then, if we do this, based on memory and the uh, documentary evidence, we, we can we will be able to to also study the range of uh, people's responses and stories. For example, in one earthquake, uh, people fled to uh, a neighboring province. So fleeing to another town, another province, could be one strategy. In, in some cases, like drought, ganyan, maybe selling carabaos, maybe uh, selling uh, motorbikes, Ganyan. So sa mga planners, sa mga planners, pwedeng ma ma-predict nila na kapag ganito lang, pag ganitong disaster, kumanda na kayo mga banking system. Pwede ba magpautang kayo ng konti na mga konti lang yung interest? O yung mga gustong tumulong diyan, ah uh, wag niyo nang bilhin yung kalabaw. Uh, tulungan niyo na lang na o oh, wag naman nila ibenta yung kalabaw kasi y- the, the big temptations for the people will be to sell their carabaos, but that's their means of livelihood. So, magiging pointed yung planning. Performing some rituals. Some people can can be of help in uh, supporting uh, the cost of rituals uh, in in appeasing the spirits. And wag, na, wag naman natin sabihin na, ah, wala namang kwenta, wala namang connection yan sa, sa hangin at saka sa mga bundok. Tapos kuminsan naman, their able-bodied children are asked to go and work abroad. And take note, kapag may mga ganito mga disasters, man-made disasters and natural disasters, tumataas ang rate ng human trafficking, human smuggling. Dito, pagka ganito na may mga, may mga ganyang disaster, dapat handa na yung DSWD at iba pang mga NGO support group na saluhin yung mga bata mga teenagers na pwedeng matukso na because of their displacement, a, a next step displacement like human trafficking would be very, very, uh, a, a very uh, welcome thing for them because they cannot go back to their areas. Another displacement like human trafficking going abroad to work uh, could be a very big temptation. Yung iba naman, staying put and uh, they want to meet their, their creator. Dito na kami malulubog, dito kami mamamatay. Now, what do we do with that? I think we need to plan ahead, not just to predict the, the magnitude of the earthquake, but to also calculate the people's stories and responses. Uh, natutuwa ako dahil merong sensitivity itong libro na to para ikonekta sa, sambuang, sa mga man-made disasters, pero siguro kulang pa. Kulang. Dahil halimbawa, nung nandoon ako sa Sambuanga Siege, eh, talagang ano, nasa gitna ako ng gera. Alam mo, nung inilagay namin yung mga, mga refugees, doon pa naman bumagyo. Grabe talaga. So kung open air yung, ano, yung refugee camp, uh, hindi na predict na pwede pa lang bumagyo at mad, mabaha yung mismong refugee camps. Pero ang nakakatawa, as a result of this, you gain more friends and that could be an disasters and conflicts should be a trigger for interreligious dialogues. Now, the conflicts have been triggers for interreligious dialogue, intercultural dialogues, but disasters should be tapped as a resource for a trigger for interreligious uh, cooperation. Ayan. So, what else? Last na lang to. And finally, we should learn how to deal with LGUs. Sabi nga kanina ni ni Dr. Ancilia, 
Ngayon, siguro, uh, we need communicators, popularizers, artists in order to show the, the, the input of the natural scientist could really be uh, very helpful provided we have a good communication uh, process. So, and we have to intervene where uh, plannings and decision making uh, are being, being done. So, maraming mga research. And I would like to, to comment that this book would be a good contribution to planning, development, and even uh, the development of literature and uh, political mobilization. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Daghang salamat, Paring Bert, for your insightful and critical <laughs> stances on Mindanao and Sulu studies. And thank you for providing the context no, where the book, A Timeline of Mindanao Disaster, belongs. No? Um, now, for our last but definitely not the least speaker, she is a registered nurse and at the same time holds an MMPA and MMBA. She serves as a senior board member of the province of Cotabato. With her advocacy to mitigate disasters, she was appointed as the incident management commander during the series of earthquakes that devastated many parts of the province. Let's welcome Honorable Sherlyn D. Macasarte Villanueva. Adlaw. Before I begin giving my insights about the book, let me share a real-life account when I was appointed as the incident commander during the 2019 years of earthquake that devastated the province of Cotabato. In one of the relief and rescue operations of the Boss. provincial government, I yes. chose to have a conversation with uh. whom I called Manong in our local language and he shared that he will no longer go back to their place because he was afraid that the future generation will not be informed about the quake that had happened and that they might forget about it this narrative has given me an insight that we are indeed not fully prepared for disasters and that we need to internalize the importance of historical evidence if his narrative would be safe kept, it would become one of the references that can help us prepare for any disasters. For this insight, I will share my words of appreciation, realization, and recommendation of the book. Since the RA-10121 was enacted last May 27, 2010, it has been the predicament of the local government units in Mindanao, especially in Cotabato province, to have the database of the disasters that befell in our area. In that note, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to Professor Alfredo Maharlegmay, Professor Maria Crisilda Baldago, and the University of the Philippines, because this is not only a book but I consider this as your gift to the people of Mindanao. This book does not only provide key insights and information about the occurrence of disasters, but in turn will help the dwellers of Mindanao to prepare for future disasters. With this, I am beyond thankful. After a thorough examination of the book, I realized that in mitigating and eventually preventing disasters, there are two things that we need to look into. These are warning and response. Upon reading the book, I contemplated that its content satisfied the element of warning. However, the fulfillment of the element of response lies in the hands of us, Mindanaoans. This is indeed a challenge that confronted us before and still confront us today. 
but with the aid of this book and the proactive cooperation of the leaders and people involved, we will surely be prepared for disaster. Moreover, Another input that I gathered from the book is that it puts emphasis on the responsibility of the educator to disseminate information regarding disasters and calamity. However, one thing crossed my mind, and that while we are pushing for the comprehensive spread of awareness about disasters in the academy, how about those who could not be reached by the school, such as the out-of-school individuals? How can we better inform and protect them from the dangers that they might encounter because of the lack of knowledge about disasters? Hence, disaster affect anyone, not only those from the educational realm, but also those who are outside of the wingspan of the academe. This time, allow me to take this realization of mine in the field where I belong, and that is in the field of public service. On a personal note, I believe that the changes of administration in the local government units is one of the factors that has greatly affected the operations on disaster management. As a Mindanaoan, I believe that the systematic data banking in every city and municipality must be implemented by gathering and securing accurate and reliable data. This data will be helpful in crafting the disaster plan. Also, if we are to prepare seriously, a disaster preparedness shall be conducted not just in the local government unit but also amongst all stakeholders, reaching even up to the grassroots level. Finally, I came to ponder that there is an ultimate calamity that many of the cities and municipalities are struggling, and I coined this as political calamity. This happens when people in the government seat make it a big deal to whom the credit shall be given, putting more weight on their personal interest rather than the welfare of their constituents. I believe this is the kind of calamity that needs to be addressed for all plans of the government will be put to waste if there is a struggle on good governance for the people and of the people. Will it be good to memorialize disasters such as earthquake, typhoon, storm surge, and flood? For good or ill, memorializing is a nature of human in which the people of Mindanao should reflect. What is important is we live to remember and learn our lesson from them. As long as we immortalize this account, we can save more lives and never again will another manong be lost of hoping for a safer tomorrow. Blessings and peace to everyone. Salamat kaayo, Honorable Sherlyn, for discussing the importance of disaster mitigation responses, especially during natural hazards. No? In the last two years, the Southern Mindanao region has experienced earthquakes, no? and I have also experienced that myself. Anyway, we are now open for questions. You can type in your questions at the open section, at the comment section, rather, of the Likaan Facebook page. Do um, you have any questions? Okay, so yeah, so good, let's start with my question. No? Uh, I will take off from what John and Paringbert have asserted about the power of oral laws and oral history in enriching the data that can be found in the book. Perhaps uh, it can be a future project no? after a timeline of Mindanao disasters, but uh, can you be more specific on how the book could look like? Yes, to our uh, resource speakers. Perhaps yeah, Padding Bird and John can answer yeah. the question. Yes, John. Sige ka muna kasi nabanggit ko kanina na baka pwedeng may oral history. Inisip ko yun, maganda nga kung may oral <coughs> history. So pupunta yung mga, kumbaga yung libro, um, magiging installation siya ng mga orally recorded na na mga narratives tungkol doon sa mga sakuna. Ang, ang iniisip ko lang, 
the 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 older the the disaster is, the more we will be reliant on textual resource. So sa papan ba to? So parang combination siguro siya ng mm-hmm. ng dalawa, ng oral at ng written. Tapos sa tingin ko yung yung taong gagawa nito ay historian, but at the same time someone who has a very strong storytelling. Uh, Ben, parang yung parang history as a, as a storytelling uh, yes, method, yes. kumbaga, ganun. So, <clears throat> para ma-integrate, kasi medyo mahirap nga i-integrate yung, yung myths, yung lore, at pati yung actual na, actual na um, testimonies ng mga taong napekuhan. Na sa tingin ko, nakikita siya minsan sa aklat, nakita siya sa libro <clears throat> minsan. May mga moments dito, gaya nung yung pinaka- Parati kong minimension yung Mount Parker. Kasi dito sa libro, interestingly, siya yung may pinakamaraming entries. At kumbaga siguro, yes. nag-rely siguro yung dalawang authors natin who, to be fair, are, are, are very, very good when it comes to ano naman at providing the data. Walang kawalangan talaga sa data. Um, ano siya eh, parang kung, kung ano yung kinuha, kinuha nilang sources... Um, na merong ganun kasing richness of of details and data na na carry over siya sa libro yun nga lang yung ibang mga events medyo ano lang siya napaka dry napaka date na, napaka pure data lang niya so nakikita ko actually dito sa libro yung potential ng ng another kind of book so ang nakita ko is similar uh, divided but pwedeng gamitin niya yung timeline na ginamit ng libro pero um, pag kinikwento na ngayon no hindi lang mm-hmm. pinapre, hindi na presenta pero kinikwento at hinahabi yung mga yung mga pangyayari na sa tingin ko yung parang parang ginagawa rin nila para nila nina Father Bert sa ibang mga libro ganun yung parang pwedeng pwedeng gawin sa susunod mm-hmm. na mga projects in collaboration with Dr. Lagmay and Dr. Baldado of course Yes, yes, definitely. Oo, parang it reminds me of Macario Chu's book, di ba, John? Uh, Davao History, Reconstructing uh, History Through yes. Memory, di ba? Para it yes, makes use okay. of oral narratives, oral yes. lores, di ba? So perhaps uh, in the future, no, we can have another book uh, like this one, no, A Timeline of Mindanao oh. Disasters, but fusing the empirical written texts and the oral lores, di ba? Yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. how about Paring Bert? Mm-mm, perhaps he has something to share about it. Well, uh, ako naman, uh... Una-una, hindi ko aasahan na yung sumusulat ng tumitingin ng mga technical maps, sila rin yung kukuha ng mga mm. uh, folklore, mga ganyan. <laughs> uh, kung merong gagawa nun, pwede. Pero hindi ko uh, normally aasahan yan. So, ang maganda, yung talagang magaling sa dito sa mga empirical observation using different kinds of Uh, instrumentation do it well do it well do it well pero yung iba naman na mag na mga kwentista uh, magbasa ng mga libro na ganito tapos pagganahin yung imagination yung ngayon ang titig ang kukonsulta hindi naman ng mga kwentista mga makata um, yung mga ethnographer din na kuminsan yung mga ethnographer Medyo ano rin eh, medyo tuyot din yung pagsusulat. Hindi <laughs> ba no? Uh, kasi nang gagaya sa natural science. no So, pagtulong-tulungan natin ito. Yung mga gagawa ng pelikula, yan, challenge yan. Kasi yung gagawa ng pelikula, kailangan may accuracy, yung tamang dilim, tamang dilim ng ulap, yung ganyan, ano? Uh, so, In other words, magtulong-tulong tayo pero hindi ko aasahan sa isang disiplina na sakupin niya rin ng lahat ng, ng iba pang mga disiplina. Sa totoo lang, ang daming angles yan. Nung nandu doon ako sa NCCA, uh, naghahanap kami ng mga topics doon sa mga tabuan at sinadjust ko na isang annual na tabuan ay tungkol sa science writing uh, environment. Sabi ko, bakit kulang tayo ng mga literature on bakyo. Mga ganyan, ano? Samantalang nasa tradition ng folklore. Ulan, ulan, pantay, kawayan, bagyo, bagyo, pantay, kabayo. You know, was, na, naligaw na tayo na purely parang social. Uh, uh, so, ang hamon, wag muna nating paghalu-haluin hanggat hindi kaya. 
So yung mga magagaling sa pagkwento, magbasa ng mga scientific books, magbabad uh, sa community komunidad, mag-obserba at uh, siguro yung mga gagawa ng pelikula, sila yung makapwedeng magsama-sama niyan. Pero kung kaya rin lang, pati hindi. <laughs> Kasi yung mga uh, field worker, bigyan mo ng dagdag na panahon, nakakapagdagdag ng ano eh, ng mga historical accounts. Pwede rin 'yan, pwede rin 'yan. Uh, dagdag lang ng oras at saka ng skill. Okay? Yeah, yeah, I agree with uh padding for no, perhaps <laughs> it will be another project diba, another in the future. Project. Another project in the future and uh the two authors of a timeline of Mindanao disasters and perhaps also padding birth and Dr. Kaloy and Professor John no, can be the ano the um uh advisors diba, of the future project. Yes, Now, uh, I will. <laughs> yes, definitely. We have here another question. I, I think this is a question to all our panelists, no? Uh, does the book offer some insights into the patterns of collective social responses to disasters? Some thoughts, perhaps, on the social character of Pinoy's no, during disasters? Yeah. 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 Of, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, Dr. Kaloy. Yeah, first, because uh, ganito, I mean, the, the, the perspective I can only offer is uh, when Project No was born, wala naman si Mahar dito, na, I'll... I'll uh, Kasi, uh, you, you know, uh, how when Noah was born, it was out of the Ondoy, no? Ang ginawa ni na Mahar is they were a, kasi pangit pa yung mapping ng LIDAR, wala pang LIDAR noon. They got a uh, crowdsourcing when it was still, na hindi pa masyadong uso, gano'n ba kataas yung mga bahasa inyo? Okay, hanggang Tuho, hanggang Hito, you know, hanggang Baywang, no? yung ganyan. Tapos, i, ilagay nyo kung nasaan kayo dyan sa lugar. So from that response, naka, nakita nila yung anong tawag yan, yung airs talagang mas matinding mapa. Kasi before NOAA, before LIDAR, hindi talaga alam ng tao kung saan yung mga susceptible. What that told me is that people are willing to learn. At, at saka, in fact, dapat pag-aralan mismo yung social response on Project NOAA. Na, na, ang hinayang talaga ako na namatay yung project na yan. Eh. Kasi that's the social aspect that uh, that the Filipinos are, are quite responsible. At saka even the synergy between The scientists and the politicians, not all politicians are bad. I mean, even if I'm, <laughs> I mean, I'm uh, tempted, you know, to, you know, to, <laughs> uh, to say otherwise. Huwag kayong magsalita ng ganyan, kasi talagang nakita ko. Hindi, kasi nakita ko talaga na may mga nagre-respond naman, lalo na pag, pag, pag yung tao nila, yung lugar nila ang ma- ma- madadali. Okay? Mahar can give you examples on this. Eh. Kasi ang ganda nga, ang kandahan doon sa disaster response is pointed. Hindi. Kasi for example, nakakita ka sa NTC ng okay, ah, general warning. General warnings are useless. Na babaha ngayon. I mean, <laughs> what does it affect me? You know, ah, kung may lindol. Eh, pero kung sa, sa lugar ko, dito ngayon sa PNRI, at 4 o'clock, may tatamang, ano, tawag dyan, 2 uh, meters na tubig. I mean, ano. So may, may, may ano yung, may, may, in fact, maganda yung, ano, eh, maganda yung model. I think it, will, it must be pursued. Uh, so yun po yung ano isang uh, uh, yung yung social uh, response response but saka active na rin kasi social media yung mga tao so pwede sila pati first they can calibrate kasi the government has projects they can calibrate uh, ano ba yung tama ano yung uh, ano yung naging mali what we can learn uh, from that no uh, so yun yung ano yun yung dapat uh. tapos ang isang maganda rito yung LGU people sana mas savvy tech savvy kasi or kung hindi sila tech savvy they have the humility to turn to people who are tech savvy para magtatanong. Uh, kasi isang example ha, yung disaster maps, iba kasi yung, I don't want to, baka patayin ako ng mga kaibigan ko sa MDB. May mga disaster maps kasi, pero yung scale hindi kasi ganda. Not all disaster maps are the same. Hmm? Meron talagang mas api. In the meantime, i-criticize mo yung mga kasamahan mo. Naku! <laughs> Alam mo naman, yung mga scientists talagang maano yan eh. Some pero, maps are disasters. <laughs> hindi, isa. Kaya nga, actually, Palpak na kasi gusto ko sana pakita nga yung, sabi ko yung, kaya nga yung politician, hindi lang sa, even academic, especially academic. I'll give you one example dito sa UP. May nag-accuse sa amin na dapat to kami, anong tawag dyan, uh, uh, or some people, because we should have called the storm surges as tsunami. Now, I'll bring this up to you, Father Alejo. Even, you're a priest, okay? Will you say something is not when it is not? Kasi, 
Tama nga siguro dapat sabihin parang tsunami. Pero I cannot say it's tsunami. I cannot say, for example, that the Ten Commandments are not, I mean, that the Sixth Commandment is not anymore. Huh? Pwede sabihin na yung storm surge ay parang tsunami. Pero huwag mong sabihin sa akin, sa scientist, didiktahan mo ako na tsunami yan. Let's say. Huh? Hindi pwede yun. Parang sinabihan ko kayo ng ano, na, I mean, you know, as, as uh, this is the, this is the, we have to say, because if I don't stick to the truth, of what use am I? Ha? Huh? I'm just a, you know, I'm, uh, an, uh, yung talaga ang basihan ng science. Eh. Pero kung minsan yung terminology, mahina kami mag-explain. Kaya nga maganda yung libro ito, simula ito yan eh. Sa kailangan namin yung mga types ni uh, Professor Bengan to, to be able to explain may mga kwento. Tama yung sinasabi ni Father Alejo eh. May mga kwento. Pero may mga kwento rin, ang dami actually yung kwento na hindi lang kami nakakapagsulat eh. Pero yan po yung part ng social aspects. Dapat talaga mag magsama tayo dito. Especially sa communication aspect. As most scientists are lousy including myself. I mean, you know, tinutulugan kami ng mga uh, <laughs> pag nagsalita. Ano mo ba ang difference? Ano mo, Father, nandito ka? The, diff, the similarity between a professor and a preacher. They both talk in someone else's sleep. <laughs> anyway, but that's the thing. I mean, so there's, there's some there's a very important social science aspect to this. Uh, so, yun po yung important. Siguro, ito, But, ano lang, may dugdug tungo. Ah, sige, sorry po. No, yun po, yun po, yun lang sinasabi ko na napaka-important. And that that aspect has not really been investigated. That 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 connection between the science and then yung, yung pagano ng news, it's a fertile field of research. In fact, magandang interdisciplinary research yan na pwede ka mag-advise from science at saka from the, in order to, to make it, it. Kasi, Useless naman yung science. Yun yung example nga na sinabi ko, yung ano, yung storm surge eh. Yung pag-message na ulit. Tama naman sila nagsabi. Ay, storm surge, what, what is that to other people's minds? But now na nakita na si, si pag sinabi ng storm surge ngayon, tatakbo na yan. Pero napasok ka na. <coughs> Yan po. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for that, uh, Doc Kaloy. Perhaps, uh, Paring Bert, no? can also so, add some insights. So, between uh, social science, natural science, ganyan, meron pang dagdag na communication. We yes. need communicators. Uh, kumisan, mag-aaway yung ano, so, tsunami o storm, storm church, <laughs> search ba? Eh, depende rin yun eh. Uh, kailangan ng magaling na communicator. Katulad noon, sabi ko nga, ano ba ibig sabihin ng signal number one? Number two, number three. <laughs> yung iba, sinasabi, ay, pagka, ano, pagka nilipad yung samp- sinampay mo, ay, ano lang yan, signal number, ano yan, three. Pero pagka humapa yung, ano, yung nyog, ayan, uh, number two na yan. Pero pag bumagsak yung puno ng nyog, <laughs> iba na yan. <laughs> so, s- kailangan makahanap tayo ng mga ganong idioms. Ganong mga idioms. And, we- ngayon, sa totoo lang ho, ang alam siguro ng tao ay yung thesis, yung doctor dissertation ko, yung generating energies. Sa totoo lang, ang original na interest ko sana, ano, storming culture, an ethnographic fieldwork on typhoons. Ang plano ko sana mag-fieldwork habang bumabagyo doon sa Samar. At uh, tignan ko kung ano nangyayari sa kultura Tung, habang bumabagyo, anong na, epekto ng bagyo sa kultura, sa relasyon ng mga tao, kaya lang walang makapag-advisor sa akin noong mga panahon na yun. Ano? Medyo maaga-aga pa. Pero may sinulat akong ano, article, yung Storming Culture, Cultural Dimensions of Natural Disasters. At ang isa sa mga nakita ko dito, hindi lang to ordinary communication, we need to understand basic concepts like time space, nearness, scale. What is small scale? What is big scale? And what is time? Halimbawa, ano yung konsepto natin ng emergency? Pag sinabi mong ano, uh, calamity ay emergency ang, at ang emergency ay kailangan ng declaration ng local government. Tsaka palang lalabas yung pondo pagka may emergency na. Pero kung calamity at saka disaster response ay hindi emergency lang yan, pwede kang maglabas ng mga pondo in preparation for disaster. So siguro isang research agenda rin ito. The concept of time 
and scale of time, which is short term, long term, medium term, in terms of time. Ano ba ang kagyatan? Ano yung madalian? Ano yung pwedeng sakana? Ano yung paulit-ulit na dumadating? Kaya akala mo, uh, hindi na yan emergency. Kasi paulit-ulit naman yan. So, isang ano yan, uh, hindi lang ito communication, kundi yung psikolohiyang Pilipino, filosofiyang Pilipino. Ayan, kailangan palalimin din natin yan. Oo. Uh, <laughs> Actually, pwede yung mag-sumingit po doon. Sige, then, sige po. Then, sige po, sige po. Kasi yung sinabi niyo sa time na yan, at saka sa, even sa concept ng emergency yan, nagkakatandawanis po kasi ako eh. Uh, kami yung bagyuhin. Ayan, sige, o. Oh. Ba- bakit hindi kayo umaalis dyan? Hindi umaalis. Hindi maalis-alis sa isip yan. I was there in the strongest typhoon, typhoon sinning before high end. Anyway, one thing I noticed, pag may bagyo, uh, kasi eh, yung mga tao talaga pupunta na sa pinamalas sa bahay. Walang ano yun, walang question. And it was, uh, yung, it did not be emphasized. Pat- patutuloyin mo yung taong nangailangan. Okay? Tapos pangalawa, sabi ng iba, bakit kayo naggagawa ng ganyang bahay na maliliit? Yung mga made of, yung weak materials. Kasi, pag na- natapos ng bagyo, tatayo ulit, no? Kaya nga, that also is important in, for example, evacuation. Kasi ang gagawin yung evacuation lalagay yung mga tao sa bundok na walang hanap buhay. Di ba? Eh, pwede walang ka naman. Kamag-anak. O, walang kamag-anak. Eh, pwede ka namang mag- mag- magtayo ng payag doon sa may dagat, malapit. So, mga ganong klaseng uh, pag-iisip. Kasi, yan ang problema pag papasok na sa mga NGO dyan. Yung mga ibang, lahat ng mga foreigners, bringing their own uh, biases. Let's just build 10,000 houses here. Uh, ganyan yung mga style nila. Okay? Para ma-meet na yung quotas nila. So, isang isang problema yan. Tapos, pangalawa naman, yung concept nga po ng emergency kasi sa probinsya ko minsan nakatira kami dati sa dating may-ari doktor pupunta yung mga tao sa doktor pag malapit ng mamatay wala silang concept na uh, yung yung ano muna that you can actually go uh, uh, i, ano mo i-grade mo yung ano yung disaster sa kayo it's not just temporal gradients spatial gradients it's situational gradients okay to make it more sensitive na ito Uh, uh, na ganito. Uh, actually, interesting. Sa katanduan is, may term pala kami sa storm surge. Na na-discover ko lang. So, uy. <laughs> uh, so, so as, as you can see, while we're discussing, there are many aspects of researches that we can be doing towards this area. Kasi, just from the, uh, 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 apart from the physical observations, as uh, what Father is saying, and then the, the cultural, the uh, situations of this, the communications aspects of this. Very, ano talaga eh, I'm talking of yan, uh, in, in my mind, very, uh, and I, I'm glad, I'm very happy that you invited me kasi, bihira kami yung makipag-usap ng ganito eh, sa mga, <laughs> 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 ang kukulit kasi pag isa, hindi mo na intindihan, ganun, hindi, kasi, iba talaga kasi pag mag-explain ka nga, uh, ng ano, ng, at, at saka yung sinasabi mo, Father, I mean, yan, yung ah, concept ng scale. Maraming Pinoy, hindi marunong basa ng mapa. Mm. Isa sa probinsya, nasaan ba yung lugar na yan? Ah, malapit lang. Ah, nandyan lang yan, okay? Ah, kasi taga doon siya, hindi niya alam na tatlong bundok pa lang tatahakin mo bago ka makarating, no? So, so mga ganun klase, uh, ano, uh, uh, so, both in terminology and, and, in, the, and in the nuances, we can still learn a lot. Ang siguro follow up ko lang doon. Madalas ang temptation naman sabihin natin na wala silang wala silang notion of scale, wala silang notion of time, ganyan. Ang natutunan ko po uh, sa field work ko sa Mount Apo, iba-iba lang talaga. Kasi sa atin ang measurement of time nasa relo. Whether digital or analog, ganyan. Pwede rin naman na nasa araw, di ba? kung gaano kataas yung araw, yung sa mga taga-bohol, parang ang hirap mag-isip ng planning, pero pag sabihin mo na, uh, bili tayo ng ganitong biik, pagdating sa piyesta, pang litsyo na yan. Ayun, alam nyo. <laughs> Doon sa Mount Apo, kung kailan magluluto, at saka palang kukuha ng panggatong. Eh sabi ko, eh ba't ganyan? Ba't pag umuulan, eh, nakakakuha pa rin sila ng tuyong kahoy. Pero na, sabi ko, wala silang sense na ano, uh, future thinking, foresight. Pero nung nag-iikot kami sa Mount Apo, 
kinukunan namin yung mga litrato, yung mga landmarks, sabi ng isa, Father, paring Bert, dito ang ganda ng lugar na to para sa ratan. Sampung taon lang. Ganito na kalaki yung ano, ratan. Sabi ko, ano-ano na sabi mo? Sampung taon lang. Eh wala nga kayong sense ng susunod na panggatong. Eh. <laughs> Pero pagka sa ratan, meron silang alam. Al- alam nila kung paano susukatin ng taon pagka ikinabit mo yung yung panahon sa rat sa uway sa ratan. Ang galing. So kailangan matiyaga tayo bago natin siguro i-apply yung sa atin. Uh, ang NGO, ano ang scale of time? Ano yung short term, medium term? Siguro nakakabit yan di sarilo sa funding yes. ano uh, window. Okay. Okay. <laughs> ang LGU na ang time frame nila ay susunod na eleksyon. Sure. Mahirap naman yung gumawa ka ng project na ang makikinabang yung susunod na mayor. Di ba? Ang NEDA, six years. Yung Mindanao Development uh, Authority, ang ginawa namin doon sa planning ay pang 30 years. Ay sabi naman ng iba, mahirap na maisipin yung 30 years. Kaya lang, pag, iba yung naman yung paggawa ng Barangay Road at saka ng ano, mga NLEX. Oh, yes, so, yes. <laughs> i- i-adapt din natin yung notion yes, of time. Uh, Pero we need to understand the basic framework of time and space. Yes, definitely. Course, and uh, relationships. Oh. Especially nag-iiba-iba no yung konsepto ng panahon at espasyo batay sa iba't ibang ethnolinguistikong grupo, di ba sa oh. Pilipinas. Siguro si John may masasabi din about doon sa insights sa collective social response to disasters. For example, how do we imagine resilience, di ba amid these natural hazards and disasters? Yes, John. Oh, um actually doon sa libro, nakita natin So in instances um, wherein people do learn, um, nakakapture naman siya ng libro yung mga instances na na, nakaka, na natututo yung mga tao. At, at syempre naman, bago pa man tayo nagkaroon ng written history, na, na, no, na, na, nakaka, ano naman, nakakaagapay naman yung mga komunidad at marunong na marunong naman na tayong uh, maghanda. Pero nakita rin dito sa libro, dahil nilatag niya ng isang malawak na timeline, nakikita mo na yung problema minsan hindi sa individual na mga tao, sa mga communities lang, kundi yun sa mga pangyayaring, you know, yung pangyayari sa komunidad, like yung pag, pagdating ng mga kung ano-anong mga pagbabago, gaya ng pagbina. No? So, at kasi yun nga napaka if you go to this book you will really see the evidence of the devastation that mining has wrecked on about uh, the oro it's it's there and then on the on the book it's very coldly stated the lives that were lost and the the billions of people of uh, pesos that were lost as well you know money and lives and and so kumbaga uh, Nakikita dito na yung idea natin ng resilience no, na inaparating ng laway sa social media, di ba? Na mm-hmm. huwag na i-perpetuate yung, ano, yung notion ng resilience na empty naman. Uh, siguro ang gaya ng ginagawa ng librong ito is yung, uh, ang paghahanda no, ng mga tao ay dapat nakabase sa, sa siyensya at, uh, uh, at at the same time doon sa alala ng, ng mga tao no doon sa sa kanilang ano tama ito na, na mga na pagdaanan ng kanilang mga mga ama ina at mga ninuno no pag pag sa tingin ko pag nakokombine ito mas malakas yung mas malakas yung preparation ng mga ng mga tao nakikita siya doon sa libro kapag matapos na yung timeline at sa tingin ko syempre naging critical ako sa timeline para syempre yung mga susunod na mga ng mga proyekto makakapture naman nila yung ano yung mga dapat i-capture pero sa tingin ko kapag meron ng ganitong klasing project yun nga magandang magandang addition doon sa idea of resilience you know? uh, ano ano ba yung word natin sa ano ba yung salita na ginagamit natin para para i-describe yung yung ganung klasing attitude na hindi tayo mamatay matay hindi tayo ma ma maano ma, ma basa-basa lang na ma, ma, matatalo ng sakuna uh, pero syempre Uh, dahil may ganda ng mga proyekto, maganda yung nabuksan yan na pwedeng gumawa ng kasaysayan 
na ang na ang main narrative niya, ang main narrative niya ay yung mga sakuna. Actually magandang mm-hmm. prompt siya. So uh, dito sa pag-uusap nakikita ko nga yung yung importance ng collaboration talaga ng iba't ibang mm-hmm. <laughs> iba't ibang eksperto sa iba't ibang larang. So yun yan na siguro yung ang ibig sabihin ng interdisciplinarity no, na parati nating uh, gustong makamit. So yun. So hindi na siguro maging sentimental about resilience kundi maging uh, maalam no? yes. at at equip ng scientific na, na na data at the same time yung deep understanding of the communities and our culture <coughs> so ganun tama oo kasi napaka-abstract no ng resilience na word di ba kailangan talaga natin konkreto konkreto o concrete di ba na uh, pagpapaliwanag o imagination dito sa resilience okay i have another question uh, and this one is about the about uh, one of the most vulnerable groups in Mindanao and i'm referring to the lumad people di ba which is now a contested term di ba uh, during disasters it can be said that the lumad are the most affected physically, mentally, spiritually, and we have seen this during Typhoon Pablo in Compostela Valley. Diba? I believe Arnel Mardocchio has made films about this. Uh, Ang Tigmo Sa Akong Pagpauli, Riddles of My Homecoming, and then Iisa, which was directed by uh, Chuck Gutierrez. No? My question is, will there be concrete ways to avoid the massive effects of disasters to the Lumad? Or what will be the more emancipatory means and modes to, uh, for the lack of better term, protect or spare the Lumad people from disasters? Can I take a stab yeah, at that? Sure, Doc Kaloy, Doc Kaloy. Yeah. Kasi ganito eh, uh, there are disasters that we cannot do anything about. Meaning, for example, you cannot stop a high end, a, mm. vulc- a volcanic eruption or an earthquake. But what we can provide are warnings. So ang kulang talaga doon yung communications, no? Uh, but I tell you, sinabi ka ni Father, ano yung kanina, I, you know, I, I, uh, when I would go with Lumads as guides, they have a certain sense and nature na magaling sila. For example, uh, you know, yung uh, uh, pag, even to sense na parating yung rain, yung mga ganun. Uh, so, uh, the, the, the thing is to how to translate warnings into their, ano, into their, uh, into their language at saka doon sa kanilang. Kasi pag, Pag na-warning nga naman, uh, alam na ni, alam na nila yun eh. Uh, I mean, one unfortunate example na marami talagang namatay, yung pinatubo yung eruption. Maraming ita kasi, na, na, okay, nalipas na, na mo lahat ng tao. Pero yung mga nandun sa bundok, talagang, uh, at saka sila mismo ang managasabi na alam na namin ito. It, it, it's easier for uh, for an educated person to, I mean, I wouldn't say na, kasi lumawak na yung perspective natin that, ah, na pwede pala ako magkamali <laughs> na yun pala meron palang bago dito you know may pinakita sa akin satellite data or something now how do you translate that to the uh, to the to the lumads i mean uh, because i mean i'm sure they can uh, they can learn ano tawag yan uh, getting things like uh, from from cell phones in project noa ganun eh naka cell phone uh, yung yung access and i believe they can easily <coughs> so it's a matter of communication uh, but it's again, it's not easy for a scientist to do it. Uh, hirap. Kailangan namin ng katulong sa pag-explain doon sa mga uh, ganun. Pero hindi pwede sabihin na we can protect them kasi there are things that they that we cannot do anything about. But uh, at least you have to step out. You cannot face uh, the brief. No, you just have to step uh, step aside. But knowing when to step aside is the key. Hmm? Yun po. <clears throat> Thank you for that, Dr. Kaloy. Uh, Paring Bert, do you want to add? Yeah, uh, actually, m- m- malawak tong discussion na to. Eh. Um, uh, Siyempre, walang kapalit yung talagang leadership uh, formation at nung mga leaders. No? Uh, tapos, meron kasi sa kanila na mas advanced na mag-isip eh. <laughs> Suportahan natin yung mga yan. Hindi naman kailangan na ang pagsuporta sa lumad ay paraging pang maramihan. Merong pa ilan-ilan dyan na ang daming alam na lingwa eh, Kasi malikot. Nanliligaw sa iba-ibang tribo. <laughs> uh, merong mabilis. Kasi kaya nga pagdating ng ibang foreigners, meron na agad translator sila na kukuha eh. Merong mga mabilis dyan. Suportahan natin yon. Tapos technologically, ito nga kanina, kausap ko mga lumad leaders. Ah... Uh, Sa totoo lang, 
pag sinabi mo dapat may cellphone din sila, bigyan mo sila ng load, eh kung walang signal, walang tower, ito nga sana isang iniisip namin intervention, makipag-dialogue kami sa, sa smart, sa globe, na doon sa mga area na maraming conflict, maraming disaster, sana tiyakin na mayroong signal doon. Kung minsan, kahit na bigyan mo ng booster, kulang eh. So, importante rin yung pas- ipasok natin ng technology. Yung mga resilience na yan, character yan, pero kasama rin yung technology. O, tatanungin natin, ano bang nangyayari sa inyo dyan? Eh, kung wala silang load. Ba't hindi kasi sumasagot? Eh, wala ang load, wala palang signal. No? Akit pa ng puno. So, importante rin po yun. Ngayon, uh, maganda rin po yung tignan natin yung perspective. Halimbawa, sabi ni Sir kanina, yung pagbasa sa mapa. Yung mapa kasi, pang helicopter view yan eh. Top view yan eh. Yung ordinary yung buhay ay eye level. So yung bundok ay mataas. <laughs> eh sa mapa, halos <laughs> flat yan eh. <laughs> oh, so importante rin no, na maintindihan natin na ano ba yung pinakamataas na abot na, abot na perspective na pananaw o palatanawan ng mga kausap natin. Tapos yung symbolism Symbolism din sa mga mapa, yung mga legends. Talagang, ano, kumisan, napansin ko ho, merong mga projects, sasabihin, ah, nag-consult kami ng mga tao dyan. Eh, yun pala, pag pinanood mo, nagpinakita yung mapa, eh, di tinitigan na lang yung mga tao. Ngayon, may mga intermediate intervention dyan. Yung mapa, yung topographic map, pinaghihirapan yan. Pero, pagka nakagawa ka ng topographic map, yung talagang terrain map, ang ganda ng participation ng mga tribo. Ang ganda. Kasi, oo, oh, dyan nga kami. Oo, oh, doon. Ah, dyan pala galing yung baha. Oo, oh, yun. Ang ganda ng, ano. So, yung mapa sana na flat, uh, sana matulungan din yung komunidad na maging 3D. Malaking bagay po yun. Salamat, salamat, Paring Bert. John, ikaw, meron kang iaan doon? Uh, ano na? Ano sabi nila yung ano no, karamihan sa mga tamang mga tamang mga paraan no pero siguro ano din o oh, bukod sa edukasyon at uh, pag-extend ng leadership key talaga yung leadership na paano ma-reach yung mga mahihirap na ma- maabot na mga lugar at mabibigyan sila ng ng information syempre uh, sana hindi ma-displace ma- yung mga yung mga ano nakatira doon hindi sila kasi mas nagiging vulnerable sila dahil sa displacement. So, ka, parang connected yung social na mga problems doon sa environmental na problems din. So, yun lang siguro may dadagdag doon. Okay. Tama yun. Sige. Tama yun. We have another question from Facebook. Uh, considering the seemingly worsening state of the global climate, much of this change in nature is felt in the country, usually with more little impact. Little impacts such as super typhoons with this in consideration would it invalidate learnings we take from past disasters actually it does not invalidate in fact uh, uh, the, this that's the beauty of the timeline eh? mm-hmm. you put things in perspective yes. for example the malala ba talaga yung mga typhoons or hindi yan ang isang ano yung malalam yan kung wala kang comparison eh. di ba it's not true, by the way, na dumadami yung typhoons from global warming. Ah. The, that's not quantitatively supported. What may be supported is the fact that mas lumalakas yung typhoons. You know, so yun. Pero kasi ang daming, ma- uh, they jump, maraming nag-jump to conclusions. Eh. When you jump to conclusions, mali din. And then ma- mapapahamak patuloy. You know? But precisely, the only way to cope with this is uh, through science and observation. And then you can make predictions. But again, uh, th- that kind, those kind of learnings have to be translated. Sabi nga ni, ano, ni Father, actually ni Father Aleo, ako trained geologist, pag nakita ka ng map, 3D ang tingin mo kaagad eh. Kasi after years of training, <laughs> pero kukuha ka ng scale model na yung ganun, uh, kuhang-kuha nila. In fact, ang, ang galing nga ng mga, uh, ng mga tao, ng mga lumad sa mga ganun. So what I'm saying is that, so meron talaga, you know, Kasi sa palagay ko, ah, sa, sa disaster, uh, hindi naman tayo na, we are not behind. In fact, I would say we are quite advanced. Ah, and, uh, especially yung ginawa doon sa project. No? Kasi integrated yun eh. Ground, tawag dyan. Uh, integrate lahat ng information. 
and we are advanced in some other uh, than other some other countries. What we have learned is the communications aspect, the delivery uh, to to more in sa, sa dumad na yan. and that's a very valid. Misan di pinopondo hanyan eh. Eh tama na yung pagpopondo doon sa sa projects pero yung pagdi-deliver at saka pagsusukat, naiintindihan ba talaga yung ganun? Uh, so yun yung uh, at saka <coughs> si Father Aleo, kailangan yung signal. Uh, pero actually I think you can convince uh, as charity ah uh, diyan sa kinapangilinan may-ari ng mga ano na magtayo sila ng ano doon kahit na isa ang ano doon sa mga sa may mga dumad areas. It actually will help, you know, it will help a lot in the peace situation. Kasi may communications eh. Kasi may, di, you will not just be uh, tawag yan, uh, hostage kung sino dumating doon mag teach in po kayo lahat, no? I mean, wala namang problema sa teach in, pero <coughs> ako, gusto ko rin mapakinggan, ano ba yung mga ibang perspective dyan? Hmm? So, uh, one thing, uh, the Lumads are not ignorant. I mean, tama nga si Father, may mga magagaling dyan at saka may mga, hmm. sa lahat, may mga magagaling at saka hindi magagaling eh. Uh, ganun din yan eh. May kasama po ako sa Mina. Oo. Oh, May kasama kong lumad, nag-rumaduate sa UP Civil and, uh, uh, Engineering. <laughs> Kaya nga, no, nag, nag, uh, ano kami, sabi ko, itong kasama kay ibigan ko, manobo ito. Uh, ibang, uh, so, yun po yung ano, so, itong tanong na yan, walang problema kung science, ang, 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 ang problema natin, how to communicate. Tama. Keep po yun. Yes, yes. Definitely. So, yeah, my friend. May dadagdag lang ako na, May iba pang aspects siguro dito na dapat tignan. Uh, Alibaba, ano, nung nasa Mount Apo ako, tinatanong ko yung DNR, ano yung record nila ng forest fires? Halos wala silang document eh. Pero ma- mahalaga yung forest fires eh. Lalo na sa nakita natin na warming, eh yung nakita natin sa Australia, sa Indonesia, umaabot yung usok sa atin. Uh, hindi magtatagal tayo rin mabibiktima ng mga malalaking forest fires uh, isa yan sa dapat nating tignan din um, kaya lang alimbawa sa libro medyo nakulangan din ako doon sa mga forest fires siguro another project yan <laughs> oo sige John John nalagay siya sa to respond quickly to Father Bert nalagay yung isang forest fire sa, sa drought oh uh, that, Oh, tapos hindi naman I mean, nakalagay doon na hindi pa talaga determined except what the ranger said that it was probably started by a camper. So may mga ganong mga moments sa book na ay pwede pa talaga itong ma-explore. Uh, sa ngayon ako doon sa sinabi ni Doc Caloy tungkol sa na magiging useful rin ba ito sa konteksto ng global warming. Oo, kasi dahil sa timeline na siya, mas kumbaga hawak mo na sa kamay mo yung, yung parang andito pala yung mga nangyari lahat lahat. So nakakatakot sa totoo lang yung mga nangyari noong 17th century. A base sa description no ng 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 literature na, na parang sa tingin ko na paghandaan naman ng mga succeeding centuries at nakikit magandang tingnan sa timeline kung ano yung mga mga taon o mga dekada na na hindi nangyari. O di kaya, ano, uh, so pwede siya, pwedeng pumasok ang mathematicians dito at tingnan nila yung occurrence ng, ng, mga, ng mga bagay-bagay. At, at dahil sa timeline, mas ma-appreciate mo nga na, na pwede talagang paghandaan at ma- ma- maging, you know, I mean, hindi apocalyptic yung ating patingin sa, sa, you know, sa destruction ng, ng mundo. Although, of course, we know that that there is a reason why people are loud about it because we need to drum up con- consciousness pero with the help of something like this the timeline it put things in perspective and actually it has, it has always been with us you know this awesome force unpredictable but sabi nga ni Doc Caloy pwedeng ilagan no na, na, na ng kalikasan so um maganda siya sa perspective perspective ng ng, ng reader uh, and then i-combine pa with our 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 knowledge of what's happening in climate in climate change one, one minute lang sisingit lang ako ha sorry ha. sige po kasi ganito eh palagi nating pinapalo yung mga Christian sa Catholic priests no in defense of father uh, ano kasi yung mga nag-record ng mga events karamihan yan mga pare hmm? i mean dapat i-acknowledge yung mga ginawa niyan father ale Father Alejo, yung mga past. Kung wala yung mga yan, mas malala. Wala tayong timeline. 
<laughs> so, kasi panay, sa UP kasi kung minsan ang lahat ng ginawa ng simbahan ay masama. Uh, I mean, <laughs> hindi ko din matanggap yun eh. Na yung lahat ng lahat, lahat ng pare ay parang si Damaso, no? Uh, kung titingnan niyo yung mga records niyan, mga pare yan, the Jesuits are doing this with the yan din sa ano, yung sa uh, uh, sa uh, ano, Manila Observatory, mga ganun. Ang laki talaga ng natulong nila sa ibang bansa pati. So dapat din uh, mapahalagahan yung mga sina, uh, mga ginawa nila. Yun lang po. Thank you. Yeah, agree, agree, agree po ako. Tapos hindi naman dapat i-invalidate, no? Dahil uh, ginagawa nga tayo mas prepared, di ba, ng book na to, na para nagsaserve siya as an archive, di ba, kung ano yung nangyari noong nakaraan, di ba, para mas mapaghandaan natin kung ano yung nangyari sa, mangyayari pa, no, doon sa kasalukuyan. Thank you very much, Doc Caloy, paring Bert and Professor John, no, for your Pwede valuable ba, insights. Sure, sige, paring Sana Bert. Na. Sure. Uh, sa- salamat, uh, s- uh, Doc. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Uh, siguro, ang hindi ganong napag-usapan kung paano ito ikakabit sa issue ng conflict and peace negotiation. Mm-hmm. Uh, namahalaga rin yan sa Mindanao. Uh, dahil, alimbawa, nung sumalpak yung Pablo, yung mga NPA doon sa eastern border, sa Davao, sa Surigao, yan, ano? naglipatan sa bukid noon eh. So, nung dumami ngayon yung mga rebelde doon, eh, siyempre, pupuntahan niya ng military. O di, may issue ngayon ng militarization. <laughs> so, uh, importante sana na maintindihan din natin na itong mga salpok ng mga alo, ng mga hangin, meron ding salpok yan sa lipunan. Tapos, kung minsan naman, kapag may drought, eh, pati yung mga rebelde, eh, nagugutom din sa itaas. Sumasama rin sila sa pila para humingi ng relief. Uh, sa Atse, nung sumalpok yung tsunami, nakatulong yung baha sa peace negotiation. Uh, pare-pareho tayong tinatamaan dito ng bagyo. <laughs> pare-pareho tayong ano, sinasalpok ng alon. Magtulong-tulong na lang tayo. Iba-ibang reliyon, uh, itong disaster na to, pwede ring agenda ng interreligious dialogue. Ayun. Okay, period na ako. <laughs> yes, thank you very much for that, Paring Bert, no? uh, that you uh, actually mentioned about the conflict no, that is happening in Mindanao and Sudu. Okay, thank you very much. So we've heard our resource speakers talk about history, disasters, and resiliency. And during the course of our discussion, we've come up with three important points. The first point is about the difference between natural hazards and disasters. Well, the former is natural. The latter is said to be man-made or of our own making. One can surmise that the globalized and neoliberal world has contributed to various threats like landslide, which is the effect of human activities, such as large-scale deforestation and uncontrolled mining. The second point is about resiliency, which entails concrete definition and manifestation and should veer away from its abstract imaginings. More than the images that Filipinos are still smiling amid typhoons and earthquakes, what we need are people land use policies pro-people land use policies, safe building practices, and concrete preventive measures. The third point that I would like to highlight is the importance of folklore in our imagination of a timeline of Mindanao disasters. This can be a future project because there is actually a gargantuan amount of materials that can be culled from our Mindanao and Sulu oral lores. In Ulahingan, titled A Cue of Talibungan and Aruman in Manobo, recorded by Elena Makiso, there is a belief that a powerful creature named Inaagnay is the one who guards the underworld and possibly causes earthquakes every time the people from the earth world ravages the land. The Higaonan people in Teresporo Songkit's epic novel, Batbati Udan, also has a belief that Mindanao and Sulu are spared from typhoons because of a pact between Udan and a Bagani wind. There is also a Mindanaoan belief that Sharif Kabungsuan arrived in Mindanao through a tsunami. And these lores can perhaps conspicuously constitute and reconstitute mediate and meditate, and frame and reframe the history of emotions and timeline of Mindanao disasters. 
Finally, the point of the book is to remind everyone that more than ethnic and religious differences, it is still an equal distribution of power in the levels of social, political, and economic services that is the cause of the decades-old war in Mindanao and Sulu. It takes genuine concrete policies and development guidelines to emancipate the island region that has long been forgotten in the national imagination even during the administration of Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Daghang salamat sa pag mga higala. It was a fruitful and discursive discussion. See you at the next event of the Likaan ICW and UP Press. Ayo-ayo kanunay.